Hey, welcome back to Remnant 2 Apocalypse Tested. Today we'll be looking at the arsenal of automatic rifles. Starting with the assault rifle, now going by the name Blackmaw. This returning classic has received 4 buffs and 1 nerf. The damage has gone from 45 to 51, the magazine from 32 to 38, the ideal range from 18 to 20, and the crit chance from 5% to 10%. The total ammo has been reduced from 224 to 190. It also still features the same spread and recoil from the first game. The first 5 to 6 bullets are accurate and roughly centered. The preceding rounds become more inaccurate and spaced out. Overall, it seems like the weapon should be in a good spot. I mean, with all the buffs, it's gotta be, right? Well, personally, I think it's fairly average. Not to say the weapon is underperforming, it's more so that the other automatic weapons bring something to the table the Black Ma is lacking. It deals the highest base damage of them, but the smaller clip size means you'll be reloading more often, hindering your average DPS. It has the best range of the automatics, but in most boss fights you won't really be further than 20 meters from them, at least not for long. And if you're really desperate for more range, you can just invest in long shot. When compared to the other four automatics, it has the lowest fire rate, clip size, and total ammo. If you played a lot with it in Remnant 1, you can really feel the max ammo nerf. All that being said, the weapon still isn't bad. It's just fine. As Fumetto so eloquently put it, This is basically the repeater pistol of long guns. Alright, so build time. I want to capitalize off this weapon's high base damage. Using Alchemist and Medic, we get 50% increased total damage. Death's Embrace increases our total damage by 20% when not at max life, and gives us haste when below half. Using Restriction Cord, we can always have both effects active. Obviously, this locks us at half health. So for the rest of my trinkets, I chose ones that would boost my tankiness, relic efficacy, reload speed, and movement speed. For my relic, I chose Tranquil Heart for the passive regen. Benevolence from Medic and Conservation Seal boost our relic efficacy by a total of 40%. This increases the passive health regen. Triage and Regrowth boost it even more. Using my fragments, I boosted my health, healing effectiveness, and gray health rate. Spirited from Alchemist allows me to drink a Tonic, Dark Cider, Root Water, and Sacred Lake Water. Combined with Bark Skin and Fortify, I am super tanky. Were I to wear heavier armor, I could even get close to the DR cap, but I don't want to ruin my fashion. And finally, I ran Corrosive Rounds and Momentum to give me some occasional bonus crits. The idea with this build was to make the power of the Assault Rifle shine. Since I can tank most attacks using a confidence booster, I can just keep firing and firing. And when I have to reload, Death's Embrace and Rock of Anguish are speeding it up. This build was really fun. It's kind of funny seeing how many hits you can just face tank while your DPS is maintained. This weapon is apocalypse ready, even if it comes off as just being average. Also making a return from the first game is the Chicago Typewriter. Just like the Black Maw, it has also received 4 buffs and 1 nerf. The nerf was to its damage, bringing it down from 36 to 30. The buffs are as follows. The rate of fire has been increased from 8.8 .8 to 11 RPS. The ideal range has been increased from 15 to 17 meters. The crit chance has been raised from 5 to 10%. And finally, it has received a 5% bonus to weak spot damage. Just like in the original, the typewriter is a very good weapon. The large magazine lets you mow down multiple enemies in a single clip. It's basically the opposite of the assault rifle. It deals relatively low damage per bullet, being the second lowest of the automatics. It has a fast fire rate, being the second highest of the bunch. It has a huge magazine size, and its spread and recoil become more manageable the longer the trigger is held. The only major downside the weapon has is the slow reload speed, but I really don't find it to be that bad. The smaller the ratio of mag size to total ammo, the less reloads you'll have to perform. All of these traits make it perform well in various setups. The one I decided on was an Archon Invader combo. And just like with the double barrel, I'll be converting the typewriter into a mod damage weapon. Equipping the Lemire sensor, Zohi's ring, and the mod duration fragment, we are able to boost our mod duration by 80%. That increases the duration of the elemental bullet mods by 16 seconds. This lets us dump multiple mags from our weapon into enemies while the mod is active. Reboot from Invader complements this by giving us a free reload and a full return on invested ammo. As for my other rings and fragments, I boosted my skill cooldown and casting speed. The typewriter is already great at taking on multiple adds back to back. Using Overflow or Defrag cranks crowd control up even higher. Chaos Gate helps our damage in Majen, and Reboot extends the cartage even longer. 
The weapon is definitely apocalypse ready, no doubt about it. Moving on to the new automatic additions, we have Merciless. This root rifle shoots splinters slowly towards sorry saps. What I mean is it fires semi-slow moving projectiles. You're basically rapid firing crossbow bolts. Oddly enough, the model of the splinter is further back from where the hitbox of the shot is. This is clearly seen when shooting at walls or the target dummy. They are actually just a tiny bit further back than the crossbow bolts are. If I had to guess, they're probably based off the same projectile. Anyways, these flechettes deal the second highest damage of the bunch, and the mag size is a bit better than the black maw. The same can also be said about the fire rate. This long gun is unique in that it applies bleeding with its primary fire. After shooting at least 12 rounds continuously, every round after will apply bleeding. You can visually see this happening by looking at the teeth closing down on the reticle. It's a pretty useful effect, although some situations might have you unable to get off more than 12 rounds to reapply the bleed. In those cases, you could use Timekeeper's Duel to extend the duration of your bleed. The equipped mod is Bloodline. It's sort of like a railgun shot. It pierces targets and deals increased damage to every target past the first. On top of that, it also deals 25% more crit damage and triple stagger damage. The cons of the weapon are it being projectile based and the really slow reload speed. Also, the weapon can sometimes feel clunky. After firing the mod, sometimes you'll get this weird pause when you go back to the primary fire and the mod itself can very easily miss thinner targets. Thankfully, the mod cost is super cheap. Both parts of the gun can be great. The hard part is making them work equally as good. Since the mod doesn't synergize with the primary fire, I recommend deciding on which side you want to buff. In my case, I'll be running a mod spam setup that also tries to alleviate some of the reload issues. For my archetypes, I chose Archon and Challenger. Archon for mod boosting, and Challenger because it gives 5% more crit chance than Summoner. For skills, I chose Chaos Gate and Juggernaut. I would have chosen Rampage, but I found it too hard to build up the stacks. For trinkets, I went with Abrasive Whetstone for crit boosts against bleeding targets. I also grabbed Shard Banded Ring for more mod damage, White Pawn Stamp for cheaper mod costs, and finally, Wind Hollow Circlet and Outcast Ring for faster reloads. For the Mutator, I chose Failsafe for more mod damage and the chance of getting a free mod charge. And for my fragments, I went with mod damage, mod cost, and weak spot damage. Against basic trash, your mileage will vary with this setup, but against bosses, your weak spot hits will absolutely wreck them. This weapon may have some issues, but it's really fun to play around with, and certainly apocalypse ready. Moving on to the plasma cutter, it's basically the beam rifle from the first game, this time with a built-in mod. It has the lowest base damage of all the automatics, a pretty low weak spot damage bonus of plus 75%, and a pitiful minus 20% stagger damage. But it has the fastest fire rate and the second highest magazine size. It functions nearly identically to the beam rifle, save for the overheat mechanic. The weapon overheats after 70 ammo is spent in one trigger pull. The overheating animation lasts for a few seconds. While holding down the trigger, the gun applies a hidden debuff against enemies, increasing the damage you deal to them by up to two times. The debuff quickly diminishes after a few seconds of not damaging the target. Apparently this was different at some point. In one of the previous patches, the weapon itself was gaining the damage bonus. This made it really good at mobbing and ad clearing, but now it seems to have been reverted to the state it was in Remnant 1. I believe this is intentional though, as it does better match up with the tooltip. The attached mod is Heatsink. It reloads the gun, reduces heat buildup by 50%, and increases the ramp up damage cap to three times. It also causes the weapon to perform a short overheat animation once the mod ends. This mod is really good for improving your DPS. The less tapping you need to do to maintain your heat, the better. There are two specific rings you can run that benefit heat based weapons. Micro compressor and constant variable ring. One helps with improving heat capacity and drainage, and the other grants increased damage based on heat level. For the beam rifle, the constant variable ring is a better choice. Why not run both, you might ask? Well, since the mod decreases heat generation, and the microcompressor does the same, you'll only generate a small amount of heat when firing your whole clip, therefore only gaining a fraction of constant variable ring's damage boost. Just use one or the other. In my case, I'll be running constant variable ring. For my archetypes, I chose Gunslinger and Medic. Gunslinger for Bullet Storm, and Medic for Wellspring. Using Wellspring and Inert Overcharger, my plan is to stand still for as long as I can. Siphoner and Siphon Heart will also help with this. For the rest of my trinkets and fragments, 
I improved on damage, weak spot boosts, healing effectiveness, and skill duration. For my mutator, I just threw an extender. It's important to know if you do use extender, be careful with the mod. It'll let you fire off the entire extended clip, which is nice, but it also perfectly overheats the weapon. This causes you to have to do the overheat animation and then reload after, wasting a lot of mod duration. Just reload when you're getting to the end of the magazine. So how did the build perform? Well, when it worked, it put in some decent damage. Unfortunately, I have a habit of fidgeting around and forgetting I need to stand still with an art overcharger. I probably should have put on a different necklace, but I was determined to make the build work. One thing I noticed happening to me a few times was accidentally cancelling the weapon's mod activation by using Bulletstorm. This caused me to lose out on some valuable DPS. Activate your skill and then your mod to prevent this from happening. You can also run into the case where the mod ending can interrupt reloading, which can be kind of annoying. Thankfully, Gunslinger lets us reload instantly by using a relic. Overall, this build took some getting used to, but it was still pretty fun. As for the weapon, it does have its quirks, but it's definitely apocalypse ready. Last but certainly not least is the Bone Saw. I'll admit it right off the bat, this is my favorite of the bunch. I mean, come on, it's an LMG. The closest we got to an LMG in Remnant 1 was the typewriter. This behemoth of a weapon sports the highest magazine size in the game at 150. It does, however, have an overheat mechanic. I personally find it to not be as annoying as the plasma cutters, though. Maybe it's the slower fire rate, but I rarely find myself ever overheating when running it. Just like the typewriter, it too becomes more accurate the longer the trigger is held. It's actually better than the typewriter in that regard. The typewriter's recoil still persists until the end of the mag. The bone saw's recoil is way lower at max ramp up, to the point of being almost non-existent if you aim properly. The biggest downsides of the weapon are the overheat and reload speed. And while I'm not desperate in this case to make the weapon better, I want to show off the LMG's insane potential. That means we're going hugs. I want to make the LMG even more of a bullet hose than it already is, and for that we're going to need a lot of ammo. The ammo reserves trade and fragment, void idol, and deep pocket ring will make our ammo supply near bottomless. Hunter's Mark and Bullet Storm will give a nice boost to crits and general DPS. Micro Compressor will let us fire for longer and cool off the gun quicker. I was split between Momentum and Extender for the Mutator, but decided to go with Extender for the extra 60 bullets in the mag plus the faster reload. The last two fragments I went with were crit chance and fire rate. And of course, you know I have to pick corrosive rounds. This setup makes the LMG an absolute beast. Its mobbing powers are top tier. You kinda just go on autopilot and rip through enemies. All the boosts to reload speed really help maintain the carnage. Any boss fight with adds becomes way easier due to the LMG's ability to deal with trash mobs. The weapon is apocalypse ready. It'd be foolish to suggest otherwise. And there you have it, all of the automatic rifles covered. Next week I'll be covering the single shot rifles. I really appreciate all the support the last video got. It's got me motivated to get the rest of these videos out sooner. Let me know which automatic weapon is your favorite down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.